start lecture 13, the course is corrosion protection methods and today we will start a topic on materials aspect for corrosion protection. topic will be corrosion protection. Now, if we look at the materials mainly metals and alloys, just by adding some element we can improve the corrosion resistance few orders of magnitude like let us say in a steel, let us say carbon steel, we add chromium and let us say the chromium is added more than around 12 percent, the material will have extremely high corrosion resistance and that is the philosophy that is uh, considered for designing stainless steel. One of the popular stainless steels uh, is uh, 304 stainless steel which is wash basin kind of application. In fact, it has more specific applications in biomaterials where it is not 304, rather 304 L, where L is called low carbon. So, now if you see that the carbon content is reduced from around 0 0.08 to 0 0.03 or 0 0.02, that time we call it low carbon stainless steel and again we have chromium about 18 percent and nickel is about 8 percent and those are all in weight percent. So, then what we are trying to do is we are trying to create a passive layer on the metal surface. So, that it does not allow for the dissolution of the underlying metal just below the passive layer and another thing what we are doing by reducing the carbon content is to avoid chromium carbide precipitation along the grain boundary. So, now you could notice that by doing a composition design we are actually having a better corrosion resistance. Similarly, let us say we have a kind of carbon steel and on the carbon steel if we have a glassy coating ok. So, of course, this will come in the coating section but still we if we have a coating amorphous coating by having some processes like APS which is atmospheric spray coating or atmospheric plasma coating the full name is atmospheric plasma spray coating or HBOF high velocity oxyfuel coating. In that method by, by using those methods one can deposit uh, amorphous uh, coating on top of uh, a normal plain carbon steel. So, once we actually create amorphous coating, so we introduce a great extent of corrosion resistance. Now, here you see the base metal does not change its composition, but just doing the surface modification we are actually having great deal of corrosion protection. So, this is again on the structure part which is of course, uh, introduced externally, but still that is actually coming due to composition effect because not every material will convert to glass. We have to choose the proper composition to make it glass after deposition ok. While cooling it will convert into glass, but that composition we have to select specific composition we have to select. Now, this is again on the aspect of composition and modifying the surface. Now, let us say we have another instance like uh, processing ok. So, the material processing is not independent of materials. For example, if we have a casting let us say we are going for a welding because a long material we cannot make a, a, a seamless product sometimes we have to use welding. And during welding if we have a rapid cooling after welding we can introduce lot of stress into it ok. So, those are actually residual stress 
and that residual stress if we have it can actually reduce its corrosion behavior corrosion resistance and in fact the corrosion behavior corrosion resistance could be so poor that it can also lead to a fracture or the crack in the material ok. Now this is on the residual stress part where it gives a negative impression on the corrosion protection. Now we have to have processes to relieve that stress we have to we call it stress relieving operations we have to do it. But again while doing that we are actually making change in the material ok and that leads to change in the corrosion behavior of the material. Now this is on the uh, aspects of processing effect on the material. Now there could be possibilities of surface modification right. So instead of doing any coating if we make the surface smooth or reduce the roughness we can introduce lot of corrosion protection like let us say if we want to introduce a good amount of fretting corrosion protection ok. Fretting is a effect where you will experience for a meeting surface under stress and if we have a very small amplitude uh, vibration and that time we can, we can experience fretting. And so if we have a smooth surface the fretting can be reduced in fact cavitation can also be reduced if we have a very smooth surface fine. So that means again by just doing the surface modification without putting any coating or anything we can also introduce lot of good corrosion protection to the material. So that means we have to understand this materials aspect of corrosion protection fine. We have talked about design aspect where we are not touching the material part only if sometimes we are not touching the material part rather we are only looking at the uh, a geometry part or metal connections part those are the things we have considered in case of design modification for corrosion protection. But when we talk about materials aspect we have to talk about composition we have to talk about microstructure we have to talk about processing related change in the material which can lead to a change in the its change in its electrochemical behavior and also subsequently corrosion resistance and finally we would see that it would also lead to affect is performance and here performance is about corrosion performance that means how resistant that material will be towards some corrosive where that material is supposed to be used in practical application fine. So let us talk about those parts. Now whenever we talk about materials we have to talk about composition fine what material it is it can be single single element it can be multi element. Now most of the cases if we consider only metals and alloys there is a very there is a very limited you know application field for the pure metal. But if we consider the application for field for alloy it is huge enormous number application field. But still so that means whether it is element or alloy we have to take care of the composition ok and its effect on the corrosion behavior. So the composition is a factor. So when we talk about composition that composition along with processing it can lead to change in structure. Now that structure change could be crystal structure change or that could be change in the microstructure fine. For example let us say iron still if we had around 0.002 percent carbon ok. So that time we will mostly observe a single component single single phase structure like ferrite ok or if we have a structure uh, carbon steel with 8 percent nickel and maybe 1 percent manganese we will see that it is single phase austenite right. So that means here the crystal structure is FCC and in case of uh, let us say very low carbon let us say arm co iron uh, there we have a very very low carbon it is almost pure carbon pure iron where the structure would be BCC right. So that means here by changing the alloying elements we can make a change in the crystal structure. So like in case of very low carbon uh, not other elements we have BCC structure in case of uh, low carbon at the same time uh, little manganese and a very high level of nickel it can get into FCC structure which is single phase austenite. In fact stainless steel is basically 
304 uh, is a austenitic stainless steel that means the phase is only austenite whereas a pure iron is FCC, a BCC which is uh, a ferrite or single phase BCC structure fine. So that means composition would have an effect on microstructure or structure simply if we put structure. So this structure could be crystal structure. it could be microstructure ok. So, there could be two situations. Now, that could be mixed also it can have change in crystal structure as well as microstructure because the morphological distribution of different phases or even a single phase if it is a single phase let us say austenite it can be fine it can be coarse or it can be mixed that means there could be a presence of fine uh, grains as well as coarse grains. So, those variations are possible. So, these are about composition and structure of course, there would be effect on the processing. For example, if we maintain a same processing let us say furnace annealing we are doing let us say we are having 0.1 percent carbon steel, 0.2 percent carbon steel, 0.8 percent carbon steel ok. So, there if we do furnace aligning for both cases all those three cases we will see that gradually the perlite content will increase and 0.1 percent carbon steel there will be a very least amount of perlite, uh, perlite and mostly ferrite. But as we increase the carbon the perlite content would increase and at 0.8 percent carbon we will see 100 percent perlite. So, that means we are processing that means different composition same processing we have different microstructures as well as crystal structures are also changing. For example, in the beginning uh, uh, everything is to be converted into austenite when we do the heat treatment and from austenite we are getting. So, that means from FCC we are getting uh, ferrite which is BCC as well as we are getting cementite which is of a different complex structure fine. So, that means same processing we have different microstructure or a different composition, but let us say we take 0.3 percent carbon steel, we do furnace aligning and we get ferrite and perlite. Now, if we do quenching, we will get martensite. If we do austenpering, we will get benite. If we uh, do uh, a cyclic holding at around 780 degree Celsius, so that means close to the eutectoid temperature, we can get spheroidized structure where those ferrite will be a grain structure, but those perlite colonies the cementite lamellar which will convert into a small small spheres. So, we call it a spheroidal steel fine. So, that time you see the change in the microstructure as we change the processing. So, that means it will have a direct effect because of difference in processing. So, that means if we see processing Okay, we can have direct effect on the composition structure fine. So, we have direct effect. Now, here if we try to list those processing what could be the different processing of course, here we are talking about heat treatment ok. So, heat treatment is a processing. Now, if we start processing first thing what you have to consider is the casting ok because every material first we have to melt and then uh, we have to prepare the material that means we have to reduce the ore and then get to the metals condition and most common process is basically the casting route and in fact in the casting route we can also prepare the final product also fine. So, this is a product processing route which is casting and the casting it actually involves melting plus solidification. In fact, if we consider casting part let us say steel in one case let us say we take around 0.3.1 percent or 2.9 percent carbon steel and there if we do casting let us say we take it to temperature around 1100 degree Celsius where everything will be molten because I am considering the cast iron part. So, if we uh, do a casting without converting the material into graphite we will get a structure 
but if we cool slowly and if we add silicon then what we will get? We will get a structure which consists of graphite and ferrite or perlite depending on the cooling rate we are uh, employing. Now, if we do rapid quenching or rapid cooling from the uh, molten state, we will get a structure called white iron where the structure would be it will be austenite plus cementite it becomes very brittle and generally ladyburite forms. So, there the structure becomes very very strong, but it is very brittle. Okay. So, you could see that just by changing the processing we are getting different structures and all those structures would have different corrosion effect or corrosion behavior or electrochemical behavior. So, the casting part is considered here. So, that means we have casting then we have working and working means I am talking about mechanical working and in this particular case we are considering rolling, forging, we are drawing all those processing factor. In fact, there will be a strong influence of those processing on the corrosion behavior. Then we can take up another mechanical working which is not related to the rolling forging on wear drawing. Here we are actually doing material removal. In those working case we do not do material removal rather we keep the vol volume constant we and we generally change the shape. But in case of mechanical working by removal of material we call it machining. In case of machining we finish the material okay, and that time we can actually change the surface condition. We can make it rough, we can make it smooth all those things would have again effect on the corrosion behavior or electrochemical behavior of the material. Now, in the machining one can have like grinding or milling. So, those are some of the machining practice okay, or turning. Then we have another one which is called heat treatment. Right. So, for example, machining uh, we can also talk about the surface stress right. The machining can influence the surface stress condition it can be beneficial or it can be bad okay, towards the corrosion resistance part of it. So, it can lead to a extra bit of corrosion resistance or it can also have a kind of poor influence on the corrosion resistance that means corrosion resistance can fall. So, those possibilities are there we will give some examples on that, but it actually can influence the structure which is here it is the surface structure as well as subsurface structure. When you do machining if we consider the machining part. So, when you do machining let us say we are doing a machining part let us say this surface is doing uh, is machined. Let us say we have a structure like a pearlitic structure. So, let us say there this is the pearlite okay, which are lamellar structure of cementite and ferrite. If you do machining like this machining movement is like this the cut the cutting tool. There could be possibility of alignment of those features along the surface. So, this particular thing can become like this okay, and it would definitely have influence on the electrochemical behavior of the surface. Right? So, that means it can also change the microstructure. In fact, machining can also change the composition of the surface. If the heat content at the surface is very high, there could be possibility of decarburization even. Fine. So, that means if we talk about steel a little uh, medium carbon steel if we do machining without having a proper cooling agent the surface can get deoxidized uh, can get decarburized. So, that the, the, the surface electrochemical behavior would change. So, those possibilities do exist. So, that means processing would affect the composition or structure and then subsequently corrosion behavior. Fine. Now, when we talk about all those factors they can introduce something called stress. So, the stress can be internal 
so it will be kind of a subset so this can introduce stress all those factors can introduce stress and this stress residual in nature fine and that residual stress can be bad or can be good for example if we have let's say welding okay we missed one more thing which is welding so let us consider that welding part so that means joining and here joining means welding bracing soldering here we are not considering a riveting or bolting because that time we are introducing different materials and that time we have to look at the design aspect of it okay but if we talk about welding bracing soldering that can introduce different materials in that structure part and that different materials can introduce galvanic effect but apart from galvanic effect that can also lead to stress residual stress and that residual stress can be bad for example in stainless steel where we have knife line attack in case of a stabilized stainless steel let's say 316 stabilized stainless steel where we have a titanium or niobium presence that means we don't allow chromium carbide to form by having some elements in the material in a small quantity which will have a higher affinity towards carbon so that means even if carbide tries to form the carbides will be titanium carbide or niobium carbide which will form uniformly throughout the material but chromium will remain constant along the grain boundary as well as in the grain body and there will be no chromium depleted zone and it will not have intergranular attack but if we do welding uh, of of the stabilized stainless sheet sheet metal there could be possibility of knife line attack so we have discussed that knife line attack in the previous in the earlier lectures okay so please look into that so that is what i am talking that stress factor the stress factor can be in situ there are two possibilities in situ fine that means during joining part or during cooling we are actually having those stresses residual stresses that is in situ but there could be ex situ ex situ stress like short pinning fine so there we can actually having this short pinning part in the mechanical working actually here we can introduce short pinning fine so short pinning actually introduce compressive stress and that compressive stress uh, can actually prevent corrosion fatigue related failure so that means it actually improves the corrosion protection so ex situ one example is example short pinning and it leads to compressive stress prevents corrosion fatigue fine and in situ definitely if it is tensile related fine that might lead to stress corrosion cracking that can lead to intergranular corrosion it can lead to pitting all those possibilities exist so that means we have to also look at the stress part and since the stresses are coming due to processing we put it here actually in this particular group the uh, the working related or processing related stress evolution in the material in fact stress can actually change the material structure this is interesting for example 
if you take some material let us say a material uh, with a very high level of glass forming ability. So, the glass forming ability we consider it as the material which has a, a higher degree of formation of amorphous material fine. So, that means it so if we have uh, those atoms are let us say those atoms are distributed in a regular fashion. So, let us say in two dimension let us say these are the atoms in a material those are sitting in a regular fashion we call it crystalline. Now, if we do working over there let us say we do ball milling of a material with this crystalline structure and the, at a particular critical stress level because when we do ball milling we keep bombarding those powders powder materials and keep giving impacts uh, by two impacting balls and there could be several degrees of impact like ball impacting against the wall of the ball mill a ball mill uh, that means the pile or between two balls when they are colliding there could be also impact on the powder and the powder will be sandwiched between the two powders or powder the ball and the wall the media wall. Now, when we do that the stress level can be and every time when we do that impact little bit of strain is associated with it and when we have strain that means we are introducing dislocations. So, or defects you can say as we introduce defects at a particular critical strain level because of the stress impact. So, the material atomic arrangement can be irregular or it can be random. So, when we have a random atomic arrangement, but the material is actually solid because the uh, because it's, it has a very high degree of viscosity. So, shear movement of atom is hit, uh, prohibited there or very sluggish. So, we call it a very solid, but with the structure part we consider it to be amorphous. So, the atomic arrangement would be very irregular and but it will be solid. So, that time we call it amorphous. So, now once we have this crystal into amorphous structure and this happens because of the application of stress. and that time the material electrochemical behavior would vary and in fact most of the cases when we convert amorphous from crystalline the material corrosion resistance improves. Why? Because the amorphous material has got no grains we will not have any grain boundaries and we know that the grain boundaries are the susceptible area uh, for corrosion to start and since it has no grain boundary it would have high degree of corrosion resistance. And now, we talked about the effect of stress and you could see that the stress is actually coming due to processing and that is what we are incorporating in the processing segment and that has a relation to the structure and that would have a relation towards electrochemical behavior or corrosion behavior. Now, once we incorporate this then actually what we are seeing this processing is leading to some change in the electrochemical behavior. In fact, when we talk about electrochemical behavior, it is basically talking about property fine. We are talking about property and in fact, when we talk about property electrochemical behavior, if we see change in structure as well as composition crystal structure or microstructure we are also having some relation like this. It has influence on the property electrochemical behavior and this is nothing but corrosion behavior fine. Now, if we consider all those three parts composition structure processing and as well as property, when we have those effects it is actually having influence on the on the performance materials performance. And here if we talk only about the corrosion performance ok it is getting influenced because in a favorable condition like favorable stress condition favorable structure condition we can have a good amount of good degree of performance uh, in terms of uh, excellent corrosion resistance 
in that particular use. And whenever we use any material, it is very difficult to think of some use where uh, we do not have any corrosives, okay. Except for example, in vacuum, it is it is difficult to have any corrosion uh, or corrosion would be very, very low, okay. But that particular situation would not arise in normal engineering application field, right. So, that means, if we see it has its effect on corrosion performance or we can say corrosion protection. And if we talk about performance, it talks about durability. Okay. So, that means, it is actually related to performance of the material. Now, if we look at this, again if we consider processing, it has effect on composition structure, it has effect on property. So, that means, it must have effect on performance. So, it is also related to performance. Now, considering property, electrochemical property is actually guiding the performance. So, it is also related to performance. Now, if we look at this particular picture, this does not talk anything but the material tetrahedron. So, we are talking about materials tetrahedron. So, when we talk about corrosion behavior, we talk about materials tetrahedron. Now, in the material tetrahedron, one thing is not incorporated here. So, that we have to just introduce if we talk about corrosion resistance of the material. Now, we will see later that many of the cases in engineering application field, the corrosion resistance is decided by the performance of the surface film and the surface film or the passive layer or the uh, oxide layer that forms on the surface, oxide or hydroxide that forms on the surface and that passive layer could be in situ or could be ex situ. Here we are talking about in situ passive layer that means, when the material reacts with the environment forms some surface film. There could be possibility of adding some polymer coating. So, we are not talking about that. So, that comes under polymer on, on the coating aspects, but here we are talking about passive film and that passive film would also have a deciding factor. We will talk about those passive films in our next lecture, but that should in should be introduced in this particular material tetrahedron part. Now, when we talk about passive film, it is actually coming in the composition and structure region, because we are changing the surface composition when it forms after reacting with the surface film uh, uh, after reacting with the corrosive and also its structure also changing because of that typical structure of the uh, uh, typical, typical structure of the passive film. So, we let us introduce that particular part in the composition and structure region. So, we call it passive film or surface film. Fine. So, that would also have influence on the property and finally, on the performance. So, let us uh, actually uh, stop here. We will continue our discussion in our next lecture and some of the aspects what we have considered here in the material tetrahedron towards corrosion protection will be dealt with by giving specific example. Thank you.